Stop leaking your energy. My friends, this is going to be a really important dialogue and discussion on really the first principle, the foundation of what it takes to get to that next level of success, of you know self-realization, of really finding your magic again, finding your connection to life. This is where we begin. You know, I make a lot of videos about breathwork and esoteric knowledge, psychology and repatterning the mind and programs. How do we commune with great spirit, you know, and create manifestation, create magic in our life? But this is actually the foundation. This is beneath all of that. And this is about the science of cultivation of life force, life force cultivation and life force control. As you progress towards mastery in this domain, you progress towards mastery in all domains because everything is reflecting to you your relationship with your energy. Okay? Energy is response ability. Energy is response ability. Okay? And when we have energy, when we have responsibility, we are potent. We are in potency. Okay? And when we're in potency, my friends, when we're potent, life is fresh. We have the energy to go do the things that we want to do, right? We have the capacity to attain to those higher frequencies, to let that in intuition, inspired action move us, to go laugh and sing, you know, to go paint, to go work on that masterpiece, you know, or just to be. When we're potent, we can almost taste colors. You know, everything is much more like alive to us, but we're more impotent. When we've been leaking our energy, life seems dull. We often can't see, see beyond the next distraction, the next thing to consume. My friends, in fact, most addictions, procrastination, self-sabotage, these types of behavior stem from a lack or low energy. By increasing life force and learning to hold the power, right? When we have that power, we no longer need to consume so much because we're living on that vital force. We're alive. We want to go express ourselves, not consume dead things. So, so much can be said here. So much is leaked into this idea of potency and cultivation of life force. So let's begin there, my friends. This is Reality Files. I'm Christian, and I help people transition into soul-aligned sovereignty. And this is probably one of the most principal things to understand. So I'm really excited to talk about it with you. If you guys enjoy this message, hit that like button. Also, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I got some intensive training programs going on. You can apply for that link in the description. Let's get to it. <clears throat> so the ways we leak energy. First off, my friends, life force. Life force is potential, energetic potential. It is currency in which we can use. Our life force is manifested or materialized into things based off our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. Okay, Here's this essential key about life force. There's a living field all around us. We are connected to infinite amount of life force energy, of prana. right? But when we're outside of alignment, when we're not breathing fully through a relaxed body in, a, in, in an upright posture, right? When we are acting in a disconnected way, we are draining life force. We are leaking life force. The ways that I see life force being leaked right now, which takes away from our energetic potential and potency, and we're going to get into that in a second. I'm just going to hit on the main ways. That is distractions, right? The moment we're bored, instead of sitting with the breath, sitting and charging up that prana, right? Charging up that life force. We go and leak it on Instagram, on Netflix, on these things to distract our mind and just drain our life force away. Other ways we leak our life force. Spilling the seed for men, right? You know, spilling your sexual energy or essentially using your energy on like things like lust. That is trapping your life force into base centers of the body, materializing it and taking away from your energetic potency. Okay. A huge way that we really leak life, life force in the modern day is a lack of emotional intelligence. We don't see that this moment, everything in this moment, my body, my thoughts, my mind, my reality is changing. It's in flux. Okay, Things are going and new things are coming. Nothing you have will ever last down here on earth plane. 
Yet we spend most of our lives running from the bad, running from the pain, trying to escape that, taking the next, you know, drug, pill, thing, media to make us feel better so that we can reach for that high, which we associate with life again, right? By doing this, we are resisting the swings of the pendulum instead of being the master and neutralizing those swings. When we resist and are swung back from highs to lows and we react to the lows and we cling to the highs, man, that is such an energy leak. That's such an energy waste. Instead of holding the power and witnessing this moment passing, witnessing the moment passing into the next, right? When we lack emotional intelligence, we think a low time is a bad time instead of accepting it as this, this is a hard experience, you know, but there's meaning there. I know the pendulum will swing again. Let me be here now. The moment we stop fully inhabiting the body, we lose presence. The moment we lose presence, we, we lose energetic charge. Our attention, our energy is no longer fully here. It's no longer fully connected to that infinite source all around us. So life force is living all around us and alignment is really where it's at. And alignment is found through the breath. The breath is the main way in which we absorb and charge up life force. The breath, sunlight, right? Movement, aligned expression, inspired action. These things fill us up. Really the question is ask yourself, is this exhausting me, right? Or is this exciting me? Is this filling me up, right? Am I running from the moment? Or am I fully accepting this moment? Am I letting the breath catch me? These things, these kind of questions will help you get in line with your life force and stop leaking it. When it comes to charging life force, my friends, it comes down to really breath, okay? Breath and basically breath control. Can we sit in that moment, open in our body, right? Breathe in that prana through our whole body and let it invigorate us. Exhale and fully release into presence. Breathe in and feel alive, right? Exhale and release into presence. You're a sponge, my friends. You're the system of tubes that channels prana and life force. But when we're disconnected, right? When our body's tight, look at, feel your body right now. Where are you tight? Is your foot tapping? How's your posture, right? Is your breath deep or is it shallow? Okay. Is your mind, are you inhabiting this moment? Okay. The more disconnected we are, the less life force can pump through us. In fact, this kind of gets into the mind, body, prana, feedback loop, which we'll get into in a second. Well, I guess we'll, we'll get into it right now. Okay. So when it comes down to life force, my friends, do things that charge up. Okay, breath, yoga. I do cold plunges every morning, right? I sing music, you know, I, I, I like when the moment is here, I see how many times I can catch it daily alignments. I call it when I'm working with people, how many daily alignments can you catch, you know, each day? How often can you come back to that consciously breathing and bring your energy back into self? Your attention is currency. Where are you giving it? Right. And essentially my friends, the key, the master, the master is a master of life force control and power. Power is the capacity to influence or affect change at a moment's notice, basically, right? But the thing is, is when we have good energy, we want to instantly use it and lose it, <laughs> right? All of a sudden, like, let's say we broke a fast. So we have good energy, life force pumping through us. We want to go indulge in all the foods because all the pleasures are heightened when we're more potent. The master learns through pain, right? How to hold the power, how to hold the energy consistently, right? This gets into the flow of chi. I want to talk about the flow of chi in a really grounded way right here, and that's called poised presence. I have up on my wall, practice the way you want to be, how you are. Every act is practice. And to me, what, what, why I wrote that, right? is the moment that our we get disconnected from our body and our body gets tight, right? Our mind gets tight, okay? Can we have a conversation with someone while still feeling our feet open, while still feeling our legs relaxed, poised, present, alert, 
right? Can we do something? Can we write that paper, do that book, but keep the flow of chi running? This is a skill that you must build. How can you not fall back into your neurotic patterns, right? Habits of holding yourself in misaligned ways, ways of thinking disconnected from the heart, disconnected from the body, okay? To keep the flow of chi running is to literally be calm, poised, serene, and fully inhabiting this moment. Can you do that while doing actions, right? That is the mark of the master, right? The master owns his poise, his presence. So the flow of chi is ever present with him so that his power is ever growing. You see, power builds, but the moment, the mo power builds exponentially. But the very moment that you let it go, that you let it slip, right? You have to start back from ground zero. So the flow of chi, I look at people out here right now, you know, we're all like glued to our phones, hunched over, not breathing right, right? Our body, we don't know how to hold it. We have no emotional intelligence. We're running from feelings. We're alienated to our instincts, right? Because we have these patterns of this is how I should be. This is how I shouldn't be. This is what I do. This is hard for me, you know? And essentially we don't have mastery over ourselves. What we're all seeking, no matter what level of success you're at really, is, our, is the capacity to control and influence our internal reality, our internal programming to really go beyond the past versions of the self that holds, hold us enslaved. No matter where we are, we're looking for power. Power to change the paradigm within. Power to get to that next step, that next level. And that power, my friends, is found through the alchemy, through the toolbox of mind, body, prana, okay? This is kind of gearing up, leading into really, you know, my great work that I share with people in one-on-one -on -one calls. But this is where it's at, my friends. When we can learn how to control the state, the state of being experienced in the body through the psychology, through the, through the breath, through the prana or life control, through the body, right? We gain this tool to neutralize situations, to come back to presence, to hold the power. We gain the tools to rewrite our own programming, to slowly take the baby steps towards self-command of our reality, right? The mind, body, prana, feedback loop, how this works, okay. How you hold your body, let's say you hold your body in a confident position, open, confident, fearless. And you maintain that posture for a while, right? Your mind will follow suit. Your thoughts and feelings will slowly come to reflect how you're holding your body. Sad people don't hold their body hunched over, right? You know, just for no reason. It's because they're sad, right? And having that posture reiterates to the nervous system, to the pathways, to the channels in which you're operating through that you're sad, right? And it reinstates that. There's a feedback loop. How you use your body influences how you feel in your mind, okay? And vice versa. Hold on, let me get this set up right. God dang it, whatever. <laughs> okay. Another example of this, let's say we're tight in our body, we're tapping our foot, you know, basically our body's in a state of franticness or anxiety or whatever it is. Our nervous system is going to be out of whack. It's going to be firing in neurotic impulses, right? And the nervous system feeds off life force, okay? Life force is stored along the chambers in the spine, the plexuses of the nervous system. And the nervous system draws its nutrition, its nourishment, its fuel from our life force. When the nervous system is ap operating sporadically, like sporadic impulses, out of sync, out of whack, right? The life force is blocked. The channels are no longer open, right? Where the body is receiving life force, okay? We're creating separations. But furthermore, when the nervous system's out of whack, the mind's out of whack. If our body's tight, our mind is tight. Think about the times where you've been the most inspired, the most, the most intuitive downloads or 
insights, right? Maybe where your mind is feeling like you're at the peaks. Where does it happen? It usually happens at night when you're like breathing, meditating, or just deeply relaxed, right? Usually after a, a, a good day where you've thought about a lot of things, maybe you face challenges or whatnot. But when you're relaxed and your body opens up and your nervous system falls into homeostasis and the breath falls deeper, right? The mind expands. Oftentimes, my friends, we're operating from such, such base levels of consciousness. The consciousness is literally trapped in these lower base centers of the body that have to do with worry and fear and anxiety and consuming and busyness and action and all these things that just drive us deeper that way. The, the most immediate way to retake command of the body and the mind, right? Almost the middle path here is the breath. It's the intermediary between the two, okay? By concentrating, by concentrating all your attention on deep, slow, full breathing, like soft and very full breathing, by concentrating on that, even for just five breaths, 10 breaths, what's gonna happen is your body is going to relax, okay? Inflammation will go down. You know, the nervous system will fall into the parasympathetic. You get out of fight or flight. The blood vessels, the, uh, you know, basically the blood system, the circulatory system will begin to open again. The body impulses will harmonize. This will bring the, the nervous system into balanced harmony. The yin and the yang of the body will begin to balance themselves out as we begin to breathe slowly, deeply, and fully. Furthermore, mind and prana are intimately connected. Okay, go watch my video on pranayama and the esoteric anatomy. Okay, mind and prana in, intimately connected, okay? By breathing deeply into the body, we're harmonizing the body and we're harmonizing the mind. Seriously, just sit down and focus on your breath for five minutes, for 10 minutes. Your mind will settle down. And the thing is, is stop trying to defeat the mind with the mind. Use the breath and use the body. They're your alchemical tools. Oftentimes when we're having negative thought streams or what, whatever, or we're in these loops of these states of being, we don't realize that we're stuck in our mind trying to fix this problem from this cage of a limited perspective. What we must do is start breathing deeply and reopen up the body. How we hold the body, the mind will follow suit. The breath pattern creates the thought pattern. The frequency, the amplitude in which you're breathing at literally directly corresponds to the frequency in which you're thinking at. When we're breathing into those alpha wave, into those gamma wave states, our mind will follow suit. We are creating a vibrational frequency, a field. And furthermore, by focusing intimately on the breath, what we're actually doing, okay, is we're pumping like a sponge, as I was saying. We have this shimmering field of life force. And when we focus on the breath, right, we breathe in energy in and we re activate we actualize that field and slowly by continuing to pump the sponge in and out right the clogs in the system because this is all a system of tubes our body is a system of tubes the chant the subtle energetic channels are a system of tubes the nervous system system of tubes the lymph system of tubes we're a system of tubes by concentrating on the breath the tubes will slowly drain themselves out as we squeeze the sponge, you know, and let everything go, and then we breathe, breathe in new water. And then we squeeze the sponge, and we get present with what is, and then we breathe in new water. By focusing on the breath like this, right, we're harmonizing the field. When we create harmony in the field, we create harmony in the mind and body. When we create harmony in the mind and body, we are in alignment, okay? Alignment is creation. Alignment is power. Because when we're in alignment, I'm sure you've taken an action in alignment maybe before. And it just felt so flowy, free of resistance, right? You felt inspired, elevated, uplifted after. When we're in alignment, my friends, it's almost like God or infinite intelligence is speaking in our mind. Our mind is open to receive. We're like a transducer of a higher frequency. Our body is pumping with that living, vital life force again, right? That lower base energy is being transmuted upward. We're coming back online, okay? And alignment is found 
is found at the base level through the mind, body, and prana. Prana. Okay. Let's go to the mind. I just want to hit on this feedback loop even more. Okay. The thoughts we think in our mind. Go read As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Okay. If you think and direct your mind towards beautiful thoughts, towards beautiful images, right? Eventually you will start to feel more beautiful emotions, more beautiful feelings, okay? As we, if we think about negativity and scarcity, our body is gonna get tight. Our nervous system is gonna contract because we're in a state of fear. Fear creates contraction in the body, okay? Well, if you're in a state of fear, you can address that on a physical level with the body. You can hold your body in a state of openness. Concentrate your mind on breathing into it and the mind and feelings will slowly follow suit to a point of openness. Openness, right, to receive, to be in alignment with manifestation and magic, to be in alignment with infinite life force and potential. Openness comes from faith and poise. Faith and poise. Courage, okay? The courage to be open in here and now. Closeness or contraction in the nervous system, in the body, in the mind, comes from fear and operating in separated ways. Okay. Why is this important? Okay. If we want to take command of our reality, my friends, we must learn the science, the secrets of life force cultivation. The secrets of life force, life force cultivation, as I mentioned earlier, is literally what distinguishes a master. A master knows and embodies, right? The, the, the mystery of life force. He understands how to use the tools of the mind, breath, and prana to master himself, to master the tools, the instruments he's been given in this, in this incarnation. You know, the, mainly the thoughts, the feelings, and the body. How can we master these instruments? And through the mastery of those instruments, but through life force control, right? Through the mastery of those instruments, we learn to master reality, okay? Mastering reality starts at developing a degree of mastery in the internal world. As within, so without. As without, so within. Let me show you something. The possession of knowledge. This is from the Kabbalion, my friends, hermetic axioms here. Unless accompanied by manifestation and expression in action, it's like hoarding a precious metals, a vain a, and foolish thing. Knowledge like wealth is intended for use. The law of use is universal and he who violates suffers. So this is saying, my friends, if you have knowledge, put it into action, right? If not, you will suffer. All of a sudden you'll create all this discrepancy inside. You can't put knowledge into action if you have no potency, though. Okay. Getting down here, though, the hermetic axiom, to change your mood or mental state, change your vibration. The Kabbalion. To destroy an undesirable rate of mental vibration, a state of being, per se. Put into operation the principle of polarity and concentrate on the opposite pole to that which you desire to suppress. Uh, the opposite pole to that which you desire to suppress kill out the und undesirable by changing its polarity. My friends, this is how you are no longer a victim to the state of being you're in. When we're a victim to the state of being we're in, we're and we feel powerless, we're not empowered. This creates stagnation. This creates resistance, but furthermore, it creates this reaction, this reactivity because we're constantly reacting to the state of circumstances around us, to our internal state of feeling. This is constantly leaking our life force and our energetic potential. In order to learn how to take command of oneself is to understand the laws of energy cultivation and the hermetic principles, okay? When you're in an undesirable state, let's say you're thinking about, oh, I'm gonna die alone, no one loves me, I'm unworthy, then we're creating feelings like that. And those feelings are creating actions that reflect that vibration. 
those feelings, thoughts, and actions, all in that vibration of no one loves me and you know no girl really wants me, okay, is gonna reiterate to the belief, to the belief system, to the subconscious programming that I'm unworthy, which is gonna further create those feelings, thoughts, and actions, okay? But by taking command of your life force, and by using the tools of the mental, you know, body prana feedback loop, we can realize, you know what? I can think the thought, I can put myself into the thought of, you know what? Just maybe magic is happening. Just maybe someone I love so deeply and never even met who loves me and cherishes me is on the way. Maybe they're right around the corner. They're on their way, magic is happening. Let's put that into our mind. How does that make you feel, right? Ah, let's hold our body in to reflect that state of being. Let's hold our body there. Okay, let's hold our body in a confident, like we're celebrating the gifts and blessings of God. That we're looking around our reality and realizing this is just lessons for me right now, but I know magic is happening. Okay, let's hold our body to reflect that vibration. Let's breathe and connect the mind and body through the nervous system, through the life force control of the breath. Okay, all of a sudden you're going to be start reiterating new thoughts and feelings which creates actions in different frequencies back to the belief system and the belief system will slowly adapt you will slowly start taking small steps towards learning how to use your mind body and breath to master oneself right all of a sudden you get into a negative state of vibration thinking about scarcity and money and whatnot right but if you have a degree of mastery of yourself and you've been working and practicing these principles you'll instantly understand the art of neutralizing that pendulum swing, okay? There's pendulum swings when all of a sudden it's like money's coming easy, we have a lot of abundance, and then you best believe a hard time is around the corner, a more scarce time is around the corner, right? They're tests to see if you're gonna react. Are you gonna react to this scarcity and get all frantic and try to like make money in all these different ways and exhaust all your life force, or are you gonna stand as the master and the magician? If you stand as the master and the magician, right? you realize, wow, the pendulum's swinging. And if I was stuck in this material reality, I would react to that out of fear, create contraction, cut myself off from life force and waste what I have built up, okay? But the master, the magician would take that and realize, you know what, the pendulum's swinging right now. Let me neutralize the swing. How do I neutralize the swing, right? I use my thoughts, my body and my breath. I cultivate my life force, my charge. I harness my will. Right? And with that will harnessed, with that breath harnessed, I hold my body in the place of, you know, gratitude. I hold my body, I just inhabit the body. I fully inhabit this moment and whatever pain, whatever low is with me right now, right? And I think thoughts of, you know what, beautiful things are coming. Okay? I think thoughts of, you know what, I'm in a scarce place, but what I love to do is lovingly serve high amounts of value. I know I'm provided for. All I must do is serve lovingly. Right. We think these more beautiful thoughts. We imagine these more beautiful thoughts. We breathe into that frequency, that vibration, to hold our body to reflect that. Right. We neutralize that state of being until we come to a place in between. In that place of in between, this is where we're actually harnessing life force again. So where we start cultivating that life force because we're witnessing that pendulum go back and forth, but we're no longer a part of it. We're the spirit dancing behind it all with a smile and a wink in its eye because it understands, you know, just the fucking craziness down here and how like how intense it can get. Okay. So mastering the feedback loop. Okay. Mastering the feedback loop is mastering the tools to influence your state of being and become wise. You become wise through failure and pain. Okay. Man, I've I've been drained, burnt out, depleted of all life force so many times in my life. It's crazy. And once that pain gets great enough, you have to change. You have to adapt. Once the pain of resistance, of internal resistance and self-sabotage gets great enough, you need to learn how to reprogram your psychology. To reprogram your psychology, right? to gain potency, which is a connection and vitality of life, again, to, to gain that connection, right? To learn magic. All of these things are developed, understood, and accessed 
through life force control, All right? You learn to master your psychology and reprogram beliefs by fully inhabiting this moment, being present, being aware of the swings of the pendulum, right? And being able to banish negative thoughts, repolarize them, and plant new seeds into the subconscious mind, All right? The more powerful your potency is, the more powerful your seed. Oftentimes, when we have low potency, we have to do a lot for a little, okay? But the master understands that if he cultivates life force first, he only has to do a little for a lot because he's a magician then, right? If we cultivate enough life force, my friends, literally how we hold our vibration, the prayers, thoughts, and devotion we send out into the universe comes back very quickly, okay? What we do is guided by a higher intelligence, right? A deeper intuition. Think about it. One action in alignment can ripple through the sands of time. <clears throat> what makes a business successful is usually not the 99% of things that you do for it. It's usually that one thing that was like, oh, fuck yeah. That was just like an inspired vision, a gift. It was that one action that you took in alignment that opened up a whole new set of doors for you in your life, right, in a relationship, in any great success, in anything. An action in alignment is the power, okay? All these actions in misalignment don't hold power. They don't hold potency, okay? So if we gain our life force, okay, we can access those higher states of consciousness. We can move with deeper instinct, with deeper inspiration, right? We can reprogram our psychology. We can harness the powers of will and intent. And finally, through that process, through life force cultivation, the secrets of magic will be revealed inside of us. The secrets of magic, you know, are only revealed to one who's very present and learning, observing reality. When we're observing reality, we get to notice the subtle changes of how our internal state affects our external state, of how our mood, our state of feeling creates the actions we take. How do we get there, right? The magician observes these things and that as he gets more potent, right, his intent, his willpower, his open mind and imagination connected to God's grace and intuition is so powerful. And when you get to this magician level, my friends, not only are you a master of reprogramming your inner world, although it takes time to manifest on this lower plane, but you're, you're, a magician is a great gardener. <laughs> a magician is a great gardener. He gardens and tills his soil very well. He has fertile soil because he is reprogrammed and knows how to basically neutralize beliefs and running dominant vibrations. He has potency to plant really strong seeds. One really strong seed you know, watered with holy water will reap and bear, you know, 10,000 apples, 10,000 grapefruits, whatever it is. So my friends, stop leaking your energy. <laughs> Quick recap, my friends, life force is energetic potential. The quickest way to start charging up and keeping and maintaining your life force is saying no. Saying no to everything that exhausts you. Saying no to just like basically succumbing to weakness, to distractions, to what's easy right now, to consuming things. All of that's taking your life force for these base levels of consciousness. But when you hold the power, right, and let that in aligned, inspired action come, right? When you hold the power, that aligned, inspired action comes from higher centers of energy and actually cultivate more life force, more strength inside of you, more power. This is all a science of power, my friends. Power is what we all really want. <coughs> Life force, you know, we can charge that through the breath, through sunlight, through some of the foods we eat, essentially through our presence and the flow of chi. Can we be present and poised and serene? The only way we can be poised, present and serene is if we own our own mind and stop reacting to the ebb and flow of life, to the law of rhythm. There's a law of rhythm that we must neutralize through the law of polarity, okay? The rhythm, ups and downs, highs and lows, the pendulum swings, right? Polarity though, is what the pendulum swings in between. By realizing that, wow, we're at this state, this is, you know, let's say you tend to be overwhelmed, negative, depressive, 
most often. That's your disposition in life. Cool. Okay. You need to work on cultivating the positive pillar, the opposite side. To do that, you must use your mind, body, and breath to live, to breathe into that vibration, to neutralize this constant loop that you have created around the negative pillar. When we have low potency, we're just caught in loops because we're consuming. We're leaking energy on distractions because we don't have energy. Life isn't like we don't feel connected. We don't feel alive. We don't feel juicy, right? But if we stop leaking energy, we start saying no. We hold our seed. We use the breath to cultivate life force, right? We seek these higher ideals. We start learning to master the mind and body, okay? We can develop the flow of chi until the point where ideally the flow of chi is circulating all day. We don't get tight. Our body's always open and poised, right? Our mind is expansive. We don't get stuck on our neurotic trains of thought, right? When we have potency, addictions fall out of our life. It's so much easier to say no to masturbation and lust. When you have the energy to go do what you want to do, actually, to go paint that picture, to go climb that mountain, to go start that business. When we have potency to connect with life, to sing, to dance, to do what we love to do, to follow our dharma, right? Energy, like addictions fall out of our life. Addiction is simply a lack of energy. Build your life force, change your life. Build your life force through mind, body, prana. There's a mind, body, prana feedback loop. Okay. By mastering the instruments, the instruments of mind or thoughts and feelings, the body, these are the two master instruments with the breath in between. The breath is the mediator between them. Through the breath, we can harmonize the nervous system, relax and open the body, and the mind will follow suit. Our breath pattern creates our thought pattern. Our breath pattern creates our thought pattern. Stop warring inside the realm of your own mind, right? We literally built this prison in our minds. Stop warring in there. Go to the breath. Go to the body. How are you moving your body? How are you holding your body? How are you breathing right now, right? And this will elevate your mind to higher heights, okay? From there, what we can do is begin to reprogram our psychology this is deep work, my friends. This is the magician's work. This is planting really good seeds over and over and over, banishing certain loops. My friends, as, as we get older, most people end up on a certain trajectory into life that slowly solidifies into concrete. This trajectory is due to loops and habits they cannot break. They cannot break them because they try to on a, on a, on a physical plane, not an energetic plane. Okay, this is your trajectory. Okay, let's say you have some like self-worth issues, some money issues, you have these habits of, you know, smoking and some self-destructive things going on, you know, you're feeling more and more disconnected as life goes on because you're running from the lows and chasing the highs. You're stuck in this because you're not sovereign. Sovereignty is everything I'm talking about in this video, my friends. If you're still with me here, I encourage you to apply for a free consult with me on the Sovereignty and Alignment Mentorship Program. Really, we go through all of this step by step over three months and apply this week by week. If that's something that interests you, hit me up, link in the description for that. I'd love to talk with you. But anyways, we solidify into this rigid pattern and this trajectory. And because of this, we kind of resign to life because we fail to be able to change anything. We feel stagnant. Stagnancy equals a lack of power. A lack of power comes from a lack of life force or, um, yeah, life force and mastery of the instruments the instruments of the science of internal reformation of energy, how to align forces in a different way, how to restructure the dominant vibration within through that feedback loop, okay? So we create this feeling of stagnancy and helplessness and victimhood. Because of that, we wanna rip down those who are strong and those who are living their lives. We join mass movements. All the problems in the modern day, my friends, are literally spawned, I believe, because we are at war with ourselves. We are not inhabiting the body. We have no idea about emotional intelligence, about the wisdom of life, the laws of rhythm and polarity. 
Living so disconnected from that, at war with ourselves, chasing highs and lows, feeling stagnant, slowly depleting our life force until we're impotent. When we're impotent, life is dull. We can't really make change because our will has no power behind it. Our magic doesn't work. Our eyes don't aren't really on. We're not really seeing. We're not really tasting the colors anymore. Feeling the songs of the soul. We lack we lack potency. Okay. So this is the state so many people find themselves in. And if you're watching this and you feel like you're in that state, I feel for you. I've been there and I continue to go there as I progress in this path of wisdom, which is a path of pain. Okay. But if you're there, my friends, just hear me now. Consciously breathe. Fully inhabit the body. Start observing the mysteries and the magic of mind and, bo mind and body and the inter woven link between them with the breath in the middle. How you use your body affects how you feel, your thoughts, how you think affects your body. Your breath harmonizes all of it and charges up your life force and will so that you can direct, reprogram psychology and direct your magic, my friends. If we wanna master reality, master the control of the internal states of being, not in a control in, a, in a, you know, like a shadow masculine kind of way, of like, I want to feel like this, and all, but like a wise control, the ability to command, you know, the state of being inside and really plant seeds into the future. If I want to create a video, you know, what's your system for that? What's the magic you do for that, right? If you are facing procrastination, resistance, what's the magic you do for that? If you fall into, you know, habits of scarcity and depression, what's the magic you do for that? Cultivate your systems, my friends. Master an internal state. And after that, everything else is easy. Because fuck. If you can make yourself, you know, fall in love with the idea of wealth and abundance that's already here. Fall in love with serving high amounts of value lovingly. Right? Damn. You can align the forces inside to that vibration. You'll take actions in alignment with that vibration. Reiterating a belief. Reinstating it to the mind creating more strong actions. And almost immediately, almost automatically, great manifestations will appear into your life. That's with anything, everything, woman, success in business or relationships. That's with regards to health and your lifestyle and your habits. I use this magic everywhere. I use it to install a new habit tomorrow morning. I use it, you know, I planted seeds on my birthday this year. This is the year of the Jedi for me, a year of training, a year of self-discipline. And over the past two months, I've taken steady steps, almost miraculously, so much further than I thought I would go because I used this magic. I commanded my inner vibration, my inner state, right? Reality is reflecting that to me, okay? This is the keys to mastering reality. This is the keys, my friends. It starts at sovereignty, taking command of yourself, taking command of your breath, breath control, is life control. Thank you for watching my friends. Thank you so much for being here. Hit that like button. Make sure to share this video with someone you think it will impact. And I really appreciate all your thoughts in the comments below. I read them all, every every video, they inspired me, me, me to make more. I get a feeling of where we're at, where you're at in this co-collective. And yeah, it's just an easy way to give back. Also my friends, if you guys wanna get the breathwork intensive training, uh, basic basic training program that's free link in the description to go get that um, as well as i do have a breathwork intensive training seven week program that is all focused around sovereignty and life force control that interests you link for that also in the description i will see you at the next video let me know if we should continue on this theme peace and love